I'm using the, um, we'll see if this microphone works, I hope. So, um, believe it or not, the Russian turn is over, which means for my mini game before I go to January 1915, man, uh, the Russians only have one turn left. That's it. It is weird feeling. So yeah, the Austro-Hungarians and uh, Germans are going to go next, the central powers, basically. And um, wow. Um, okay, I'll tell you what a bit, uh, what happened. Uh, actually, we'll go backwards in a weird way. So um, yep, uh, getting awfully close to Memel now. I, I shifted some troops over to here. The, the main problem I did have, to be honest with you, was if I had just kept one infantry strength point here, I would have had a trench, and I just didn't see it, and I, I was like, damn it. And trust me, man, uh, it's amazing how even my internal whatevers was trying to figure out a way of like, well, could I cheat or figure out a way that I, there was one? I'm like, yeah, Chris, you can't do that, man. Like, just go with the narrative. That's what happened. You screwed up. So I had to move a lot of troops to bring... Um, uh, to bring someone to bear here, so that way, um, hopefully, the um, the Germans can't um, take me out. Uh, yet again, so I thinned out the entrenched areas, and so that, uh, yet again, with the, well, you can't probably see it because it's so high up, but these guys are all like four hits to take, uh, not up here, but I just uh, I don't have enough troops. The nice thing was, I'm really surprised at how much territory I was able to take. Uh, we ended up taking uh, essentially 40 kilometers of uh, territory. Uh, so they had the 6th Cavalry Division over here. We forced them to retreat just unsupplied. They just had enough um, uh, strength points around here where the Germans said, yeah, screw this, uh, retreated to their, um, to their uh, command area, which is the 9th Army, not uh, towards this way. So I, it doesn't matter. Anyways, I was able to advance in, so I'm really impressed. Also moved up uh, yet again. I just have to take the chance. I'm just uh, I've got no supply, so I just moved. Um, maybe that's why the Russian turn went relatively quick. I was just moving people around, trying to uh, hedge my bets. Is basically what's happening. Uh, yet again, moved some troops in here. I'm just gonna hope to God that uh, this fragile shell of an egg can just last uh, two more hits. Uh, from the German punch, because uh, we're a German punching bag for basically the past month. It's been nuts. Uh, as well as here, I'm just slowly trying to move some troops here. Uh, Protopopov, the second army uh, commander, is just slowly mo trying to move a couple of, uh, you know, trickle the troops over this way. We also um, uh, popped in some troops over here. It's the best I can do. Uh, for the 4th Army and the 9th Army over here, cons uh, just did a little tiny switch around for the, uh, the, the command structure over here. Uh, it was in the works anyways in the past couple of turns. Um, playing the terrain properly, knowing full well there's no way the Austro-Germans can get across here uh, in one turn. So I've got a bit of, ch I've got some time to react. So that why, that's why there's this big gaping hole. There's no way they can get across the Adzanka in one turn. So that's not going to happen. Uh, then we've got, um, excuse me, I, had to, I, I gave up this position and started wrapping, uh, wrapping these guys around here. And just, I'm going to hold, hold fast. And uh, that's the way it goes. I'm going to say this long term because I'm going to take a bit of a break in the sense I want to start looking at what are the war aims for the Russians going into 1915 and so on and so forth. And I'm starting to also clue in that it was like, holy smokes, I'm getting, I've still got a ton of work to do uh, getting ready for uh, January 1915. It's n not funny, like a lot of work. And it's like, oh my gosh, uh, you better hurry up. Cause there's not many, like essentially I've only got three turns if you want to look at it that way. but. Uh, you know, two kicks at the can with the central powers and, and, and the in-between sandwich of the Russians. That's it. After that, uh, we have the uh, December truce, which is like my giant version of the Christmas truce where everybody's going to take stock of what the heck's going on and go from there, try to figure out what they're going to do January uh, going into uh, 1915. But that's it. I'm going to say this. Uh, looking at it, For the, from the Russian point of view, I'm pretty damn optimistic. They're about halfway to uh, shaken national morale, which is, I think, not too bad. Um, 
considering. Uh, and they only have one conflict zone to deal with, with the non-aggression pact that they signed with the Ottomans. They've nothing to, like, they've got nothing else to worry about here. It's just this. Uh, okay, they have a lot to worry about in some ways, but they've got um, basically the, uh, the majority of the Caucasian army is coming across. It's not going to be here instantaneously, but it's going to be here. And with the adjustment, when I was looking at some of the things from the Grand Campaign and whatnot, there's a significant amount of troops coming in here and supply. And so, yes, I understand the other side has, has it as well. But guess what? Germany and Austro-Hungary uh, have other conflict zones to deal with. Uh, Russia doesn't. Get the point? That's the way I'm looking at it. Um, so that, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think Russia's in great shape. Uh, I know they look, oh my God, um, no. I, I think they're in great shape. Personally, um, I just n not be sloppy, and I have been sloppy, like over here there with the, um, you know, I should have just kept one strength point over there. It's about it. Um, yeah, I'm pretty damn happy um, going into whatever, but I think I'll um, just wander around a little bit, maybe with the Russians. Um, there's a, there's some other stuff I wanted to um, go off a bit with. Um, I have to start. Um, it's for 1915, like the way the uh, I'm structuring the um, the German Air Force going uh, going forward. Uh, they're going to be like this with the artillery, like there's no uh, no tomorrow. Actually, I'm, I'm calling them the uh, the Kaiserliche um, Luft Artillery Corps, CLAK, K L A K, and uh, yeah, they're basically an extension of the artillery. That's the way they're looking at it. They basically go where. Um, uh, land artillery forces cannot go. That's where they're going to try to do some strategic bombing, and also to uh, take a look at where they sh uh, the artil land artillery forces should um, uh, direct their fire. That's the way I'm looking at it. And I want this um, massive, uh, close relationship between the pilots and the artillery, uh, which I've been reading about, um, and, and also in some lectures and whatnot. And I want to. Um, portray that historically and I was like hey man let's go off into clack land <laughs> that's what I'm calling it anyways oh yeah I've got the eyes in the clack and I've, uh, there's all this other uh, I've got all kinds of crazy stuff going on, on in my little delusional imaginary land which is just the way where I want to be 24 7 all right hope you're having a good time I gotta go and hit the pause button but uh, yeah central powers are next and now it's going to see I have to I think I'm gonna have to Take my time yet again because they've only got two cracks, uh, like I said, two kicks at two kicks at the can uh, for position. After that, it's going to be trenches all over the flipping place. This is going to be nuts. That'll be totally cool, man. It's going to be like goodbye to uh, you know positional uh, uh, warfare movement. All right, see ya. Hope you're having fun.